Greetings. My name is Darkwit. I have been a hypnotist since 2008, and I welcome you to my study. Whether you are visiting for the first time or coming back again, welcome. Today we're going to do something a little different. Instead of trying to accomplish a stress relief exercise or otherwise, we're going to go on a bit of a visual journey. If you are familiar with my encounter with Encanta, this may come familiar to you. There are little snapshots of dreams that I enjoy sharing with others. Now, these may be real dreams or based very heavily on experiences I've had at one point or another, but I'm going to share them with you today. So I want you to lay back, sit down, or adjust yourself in whatever position that you want to be in. Make sure you're not driving, and let's begin. To start, I want you to take a deep breath. Inhale through the nose. One, two, three and exhale through the mouth. One, two, three. Inhale, one, two, three. And exhale, one, two, three. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to guide you with a little description to help you slide down into trance, back into that box, a place that represents your subconscious, a safe space for us to communicate more easily. I want you to imagine a pair of fingers resting at the very top of your shoulders. Two index fingers. You can feel out a couple of small details. They're large fingers, but they're gloved, leather gloves on each end, not applying pressure to your shoulders. Instead, they're just resting there. And as you pay attention to the feeling of the warmth transferring from the fingertips to your shoulders, another pair of fingers rest on your shoulders again, the middle fingers this time, then the ring and the pinky. And soon you feel the thumbs press down into your back plates, massaging the muscle ever so slightly. The palms move flush to the back of your shoulders, allowing the heat to transfer more easily. You could feel the gentle cool of isolation melting away, leaving behind that warmth of two bodies. Just hands on your shoulders. The hands slide up over your shoulders and wrap around your arms, and you could feel the cloth of another person pressing to your back. This person doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be anyone specific, merely just a presence, someone that you care about or someone that cares about you. If you feel worried about the hug, they can slide back and rub your shoulders instead or give you the space that you request. But if you welcome this feeling, it's simply a hug, allowing your thoughts to calm and soothe, allowing yourself to slip away down into your trance. And as we do, I want you to imagine that that warmth, that inviting embrace is going to help carry you carry you from this conscious space that you had been in and guide you down into your box. I'm going to count to ten, and when I do, you're going to imagine this person picking you up and taking you to the box where you need to go. It can be your significant other, a loving parent, a good friend, or a extrapolation of an imaginative person that you've always had with you your entire life. Or it could even be you. We deserve to be our best friend after all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Very good. It's been getting easier for you as time's gone on. Easier simply because you trust that this space is familiar. If it's your first time, it's okay too. The idea is that this invitation is meant for everyone. Today we're going to be going on a visual journey. You're going to see and feel as I describe, as you go on a little adventure. There's no real objective for this. Merely I want you to enjoy the wonderful adventure of imagination dancing across the backs of your eyelids. It begins with you standing on the precipice of a doorway. The door is oak with a brass doorknob. When you look behind you, it is simply a study, the kind of study that you have sequestered away on some remote island where you can enjoy some books in peace or watch a movie or curl up with a good video game. You tentatively reach your fingers out to the doorknob, feel the temperature transfer from your fingertips to the doorknob. It's cool to the touch as it saps away your heat ever so slightly. With a gentle turn of the knob, you open the door and you can see that in this room there is a large observatory. A massive orrery, a sort of metal representation of the world and the planets that orbit near it and around it, around a large glowing star, looms overhead. The wooden floor is hollow when you step in, and as you enter, massive white scales coil around the room, but it is banded with a cloth, almost like a cloak of sorts, but it is of worn denim and leather, blue in contrast to the white of his scales. The scales seem to stretch onward. Your body is almost a little bit at the same height as one of these white, large white coils. Your body is almost the same height as one of these coils. It's a bit smaller, about to your neck in height. But when you look up, you can see what appears to be a massive snake with a Commodore's jacket, the kind that you would expect a British Navy from years ago. He has a tricorn hat and he has a blindfold over his eyes, but the blindfold is made of starlight, black and little glinting stars. He looks down to you, and the stars form constellations over his blindfold, almost resembling eyes. He smiles. He looms over you. His chest is a little broad, and he is very tall. He's almost 20 feet tall tall enough that he can actually reach up to the large orrery and take notes. You notice the clipboard in his hand. He was writing some small details of something. He places the clipboard on a place that you could never hope to reach, even if you jumped, and lowers his body down. He rests his hands on the floor with a gentle tapping of claws. The claws are silver-tipped, but the gloves seem to be leathery. The index fingers of his claws are tipped in black ink 
as if they're designed to draw. He gives a small smile to you as he says, Welcome to my study. This is my observatory. It's where I observe the world and everything in it, and all of the wonderful spaces in between. A friend invited you to spend time with me, so I thank you for being a guest. He's very inviting, but he is respectful of your personal bubble. He doesn't coil around you, he doesn't get too close. He just allows you to soak in the world, soak in this observatory. At the foot of the orrery, there seems to be an archway, dripped in starlight. He moves his hand in a luxurious and magnanimous fashion, inviting you to step in as he says, I'd like to take you on a journey in some of the most wonderful places that I have been to. You merely only need to take a step forward, and I will be your captain. My name is Captain Trapes, because it is my greatest joy to traipse along the lines that define our dimensions. He invites you to step forward. You take a step into this archway, and you find yourself on a wooden ship in the middle of the ocean. The waves do not crash. They barely make a sound. You could hear the gentle wind, the slight scent of salt spray on your nose. You hear the long coils work its way from the archway into this place as his coils stretch around the corners of the boat. His tail wraps around the base of the main mast. He wraps his fingers around the wheel. The sails come out, and the sails seem to be made of nebulas. Purples, blues, ethereal colors that seem to ripple out endlessly. He gives a smile, and he tips his tricorn hat, and you feel the boat start to move slightly. It's then that you see that the ocean is black as night, but the stars, the sky, it's not quite as dark as you imagined it would be. It is the middle of the night, yes, but without the pollution of light from cities or towns, without the presence of other ships, it's just you in the dark. And the dark is much brighter than you could have possibly imagined. Captain Trapes clears his throat ever so slightly to get your attention. This is the river between stars. It's a place in the middle of the world, off in the ocean, perhaps the Pacific, or the Indian or Atlantic, I'm not sure what, but it is a place without the contamination of mortal beings. Not to say that you are contamination, but sometimes the focus on the present leaves us trapped in only seeing what's in front of our faces. Behold. He looks up to the sky, and the sky is filled with stars. End to end. You can't tell which one is the northern star. You can't identify any of the constellations simply because there are so many. And he speaks again. Each of these stars is millions of years old, traveling to make its way to our eyelids to enjoy the sight. 
What you're looking at up in the sky is history. Some of these tales have long been ended, and so much is beginning. Because if you see some of the weakest stars out there, you'd be surprised you would never find them if you were at home. Only the brightest constellations are gifts to us, but here they all have the chance to tell their story and look. He takes a black tip claw and traces one star. And as he traces through the sky, the star falls out from the sky and down into the water. But instead of it disappearing over the horizon, it drips into the water, leaving a healthy glow. One by one, lights glow in the water almost like their phytoplankton, illuminating and declaring their existence to the world around them. And soon, the line between ocean and sky disappears. You've come a long way to meet me, and for that I give this gift to you. A mere sight. A glimpse of a profound world beyond either of our understanding, but not of one of an unwelcoming notion. It knows we are travelers, it knows we are not of this place, but instead of casting us out, it presents us with this display as if to wave among wayward travelers off in the ocean. That's why I hearken myself a captain. Sometimes when you travel across the ocean, you catch a glimpse of someone else on a journey far beyond your understanding. He tilts his head to the side, and you look over to see another ship. Its sails are not made of nebulae like your own. It is merely a ship with glowing sails, the only thing that shows that it exists in the night. But instead of feeling threatened, or feeling like the solitude between you and Captain Trapes was disrupted, you see a stream of light come from the ship, a simple line going up into the sky, glowing in intense color, and you hear Captain Trapes give a smile, the sound of his teeth separating from his lips as he goes, Ah, they wish to say hello. He takes his claws and he traces lights in the air, and it causes the nebula of the sails to shift and undulate, forming a bright display, as if to say hello back. We'll never know who they are, we'll never know where they're going, merely that they are travelers. So the only thing that I wish to know is that they are well, and hopefully they feel the same about us. But now it's time for Captain Trapes to find his harbor, find a place to drop anchor for the evening. It's been a pleasant display and you have found yourself at peace. Maybe one of the stars out in the dark was for you. Maybe to someone else, you are that star. But Captain Trapes thanks you for taking the time to enjoy a lovely sail with him. He gestures to the archway once again and he slides close, allowing you to see his very large, somewhat square muzzle, his albino scales. He doesn't lift his blindfold, but instead he tilts his head down a little bit so that you can rest your hand on his nose. You rest your hand there, and you can feel the space between his nostrils are wider than the width of your hand. 
He is a very large creature. He is a dream traveler, after all. He tilts his hat, takes it off, and bows respectfully to you. Should you wish to go on another day sail, or night sail, my door is always open. For now, you should get back to the world of mortals. I'm sure your body would appreciate the company. He smiles, and you step through the archway. And I count to ten to wake you up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awaken. I hope you enjoyed your time with Captain Trapes. Sometimes we run across dream travelers in our efforts to better understand the mental scape, and Captain Trapes is one of the more accommodating of hosts. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you have a pleasant time, and I hope to see you again soon. Farewell.